Ooh. Annoying ways people use sources. So that was an important reading. I'm hoping you did. It's in Blackboard Media. If you did not, download that thing and use it. It's very practical information for using sources well. Um, I'm going to go through some of the examples he gives. He does it in a humorous way, which you should be able to tell right away from the title, and knowing ways people use sources, being kind of snide. Um, but there are things that are very commonly done that are areas that you can address to, to basically um, you know, improve how you're using sources. Um, and armadillo roadkill is a sudden quote or unclear source and or relevant. So it's kind of like you were driving down the road of your paper and then thud, thud, we ran over an armadillo. So um, we don't understand why it's there, it's relevant, it's just suddenly in our way. So um, here's an example. Uh, we should all be prepared with a backup plan if a zombie invasion occurs. Unlike its human counterparts, an army of zombies is completely independent of support. Preparation should be made in the following areas. I don't feel the connection between the what comes before and after the quote. There might be, but it's not pointed out by the reader. It's just dropped in here. You figure out the relevance. Okay. Um, so there's a case where adding a signal phrase can help a lot. So where it might say Brooks states, da, 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 but showing a rhetorical connection between what comes before and after a quote. Okay. Something you can apply to your own writing. Dating Spider-Man is a little bit similar, except it's at the beginning or end of a paragraph. So it's even more isolated and out there is a quote, and it feels like the integration of a quote is not sufficient. It's not well integrated. Um, you know, this is, feels just dropped into the paper at the end. And then I'm looking up the, the author saying, well, how does this have to, something to do with what you're saying? And where's your voice coming in to help me? wrap up this paragraph and what I, what you want me to take from this paragraph. Similar to the, the opening of a paragraph, but I think at the end of a paragraph is a tough place to put a quote um, without a lot of really, you know, a lot of care. There could be a case where it's useful, but, uh, you know, that's something you wouldn't want to, you would want to merely pay attention to. Why am I putting a quote at the end? And again, this has, instead of pot states, pots, um, journalist for the rest states or you know who is Potts why do I care what Potts says okay um, so there's adding a signal for and help but also usually a quote if you're going to quote lead into and out of it and have there be a clear connection to um, what you're saying all right Uncle Barry and his encyclopedia of useless information I also call that Cliff Clavin probably not too many of you have seen I've heard there's a channel called um, TV land um, that might, I'm guessing Cheers is on there. Cliff Clavin is a mailman who loves to just, if somebody mentions something he has a bunch of knowledge about, he just, you know, will rattle off a bunch of trivia, but it doesn't seem really well connected with the present moment or it, it it's just stuff. Um, papers can look like that in the department or probably in first year writing in other colleges as well. There's a colloquial term that we use called the data dump, um, and it's where it's just source after source after source. How to address that? So if your paper is just a string of sources, um, one way is to paraphrase more that forces you to integrate versus if you're just quoting, 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 quoting. Question why each is there and explaining relevance and connections from one to the, uh, the next so that your voice is doing that. But more fundamental to any of these fixes is knowing what your paper's about. If you don't know, you won't be able to use the sources very well. You'll just be able to say, these sources are all on similar subject matter, here they are, but what, what are you trying to do with them? The discourse comes from your connecting them to the purpose of your paper, to the focus or thesis of your paper. And if you don't know what that is, then go, go back to the drawing board and figure that out. Then once you do, then come back and apply these fixes of paraphrasing, questioning why each is there, figuring that out, knowing why you're using the source in, on an individual basis, and then explaining the relevance and connections with your voice. Um, am I in the right movie? That's where there's incongruous grammar across the author's words and quoted material. Um, therefore, the author warns that a zombie's vision are no different than those of a normal human. So there's a bunch of problems with this. Um, 
the first one I notice is a zombie's vision. So that's singular and then the verb is plural. So one way we could fix this is by making that is and bringing the quote over here. But then it doesn't seem parallel with a zombie's vision is no different than those than the those feels weird and I feel like we have a number agreement between there I'm not sure why we're even quoting but you can see that this doesn't feel right here's another example Sheila Ann Berry advises that have you ever wondered what it's like to walk on a tightrope many feet up in the air okay this is not advice it's a question so uh, Sheila Ann Berry asks and then comma capital letter here we have that, which would mean we need a lowercase h. Let's just get that out of there, put a comma, capital letter, and make that question. So Sheila Anberry asks, have you ever wondered? Okay, so working on um, signal phrases is great, but sometimes that leads us to a grammar issue across the quote. Um, this one should be a comma and a capital letter because it's a full sentence quote with a signal phrase. This one does not have comma cap because it's partial paraphrase, partial quote. Um, but we just see some grammar issue across it. So uh, I'm not, I don't want us to over-focus on these two examples, but read your papers out loud and see if you can catch some of those things where you need to either rewrite the signal or quote differently or paraphrase and making sure that there's a um, sort of a fluid um, grammar between the what comes before and after or what, what portion, the quoted portion and your your portion. I can't find the stupid link. Okay. Um, that is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Why? Um, it has to do with the functionality of your in text citations. And so here, the work cited starts with Brooks. And then we have in the in text in the paper it says the zombie survival guide so now if I took this I would want to look either under T or Z in the work cited I the Z would be most correct but some people will advertise this under T so I'd look but let's say the work cited and was had 12 sources it it's actually up at the top in Brooks not under T or Z this should say Brooks um, so I'll say that again, that whatever starts the work cited entry has to be what you cite by in text. So this should say Brooks. Okay. Um, and if you start, let's say the work cited entry is unknown author. That means it would start with a title. That means you would cite by title. But this one starts with author, so it should be author up here. Okay. So make sure whatever, in, that's how you, how, what do you cite by in text? It's dictated by what's in the work cited entry. Whatever is right here, that has to show up in the in-text. You can have additional information. If you want us to know what publication it's in, that's fine. I wouldn't add titles unless there's something you want us to pay attention with a title that can just clunk up your writing, unless the works cited entry starts with that. And I'm going to go over more about MLA issues um, in our live session, I think. Um, this one is really important. Here's where I get a citation at the end of a paragraph, but I don't know how much of that paragraph came from. The way this is cited, let's say all three lines are from Hawking. Then I would say Hawking finds, or according to Hawking, it's possible that a da 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 da. So I'd have Hawking up here, in this, out, out in the text, and then I also get him parenthetically here. That tells me all of these lines are from Hawking. So you'd use them in the signal phrase in the first line and the last line of the paraphrase in parentheses it makes like a sandwich okay so paraphrasing I'm going to come back to we talked about paraphrasing um, it's important to using source as well to feel comfortable paraphrasing or to venture out there and experiment with it our method that we talked about in class was to read the source take notes or whatever put the thing away and then write in sight don't look at or copy and paste the source to paraphrase because you'll end up borrowing some language aspects even if you play with the wording so hopefully you remember that from class